Hi guys, let's start the second part of the third chapter. That is Nazism and the rise of Hitler. The Nazi world view. The crimes that Nazis committed were linked to a system of belief and a set of practices. Nazi ideology was synonymous with Hitler's world view. According to this, there was no equality between people but only a racial hierarchy. So, according to Hitler, there is no equality between people but only a racial hierarchy. In this view, blonde, blue-eyed, Nordic German Aryans were at the top, while Jews were located at the lowest rung. This came to be regarded as an anti-race, the arch enemies of the Aryans. All other colored people were placed in between, depending upon their external features. Hitler's racism borrowed from thinkers like Charles Darwin and Herbert Spencer. Darwin was a natural scientist who tried to explain the creation of plants and animals through the concept of evolution and natural selection. Herbert Spencer later added the idea of survival of the fittest. So, Herbert Spencer added the idea of survival of the fittest. According to this idea, only those species survived on earth that could adapt themselves to changing climatic conditions. We should hear, we should bear in mind that Darwin never advocated human intervention in what he thought was a purely natural process of selection. So we should bear in mind that Darwin never advocated human intervention in what he thought was a purely natural process of selection. So there should not be no human intervention. However, his ideas were used by racist thinkers and politicians to justify imperial rule over conquered people. The Nazi argument was simple. The strongest race would survive and the weak ones would perish. So the Nazi argument was that the strongest race would survive and the weak ones would perish. The Aryan race was the fittest. It had to retain its purity, become stronger and dominate the world. The other aspect of Hitler's ideology related to the geopolitical concept of Lebensraum or living space. He believed that new territories had to be acquired for settlement. This would enhance the area of the mother country, which enables the settlers on new lands to retain an intimate link with the place of their origin. It would also enhance the material resources and power of the German nation. Hitler intended to extend German boundaries by moving eastwards to concentrate all Germans geographically in one place. Poland became the laboratory for his experimentation. Then we have some sources. Source A. For this earth, 
is not allotted to anyone nor is it presented to anyone as a gift. It is awarded as providence to people who in their hearts have the courage to conquer it, the strength to preserve it and the industry to put it to the plough. The primary right of this world is the right to life so far as one possesses the strength of this. Hence, on the basis of this right, a vigorous nation will always find ways of adapting its territory to its population size. Source B In an era when the earth is gradually being divided up among states, some of which embrace almost entire continents, we cannot speak of a world power in connection with a formation whose political mother country is limited to the absurd area of 500 kilometers. Once in power, the Nazis quickly began to implement their dream of creating an exclusive racial community of pure Germans by physically eliminating. So, they physically eliminated. So, by physically eliminating all those who were seen as undesirable in the extended empire. So, who are these Nordic German Aryans? One branch of those classified as Aryans. They lived in North European countries and had German or related origin. Nazis wanted only a society of pure and healthy Nordic Aryans. They alone were considered desirable only they were seen as worthy of prospering and multiplying against all others who were classed as undesirable this meant that even those germans who were seen as impure or abnormal had no right to exist under the euthanasia program helmut's father along with other Nazi officials, had condemned to death many Germans who were considered mentally or physically unfit. So it was not only other races other than Germans, but also among the Germans who are not mentally or physically fit. They were also put under the euthanasia program. Then we have a figure, police escorting gypsies who are being deported to Auschwitz, 1943-1944. Jews were not the only community classified as undesirable. So, Jews were not the only one. There were others, many gypsies and Blacks living in Nazi Germany were considered as racial inferiors who threatened the biological purity of the superior Aryan race. They were widely persecuted. Even Russians and Poles were considered subhuman. So it's not only the Jews, Gypsies or Blacks, but Russians and Poles were considered subhuman. And hence, un and hence undeserving of any humanity. When Germany occupied Poland and parts of Russia, captured civilians were forced to work as slave labor. Many of them died simply through hard work and starvation. Jews remained the worst sufferers in Nazi Germany. So, Jews were the worst sufferers. Nazi hatred of Zeus had a precursor. 
so it had a precursor in the traditional Christian hostility towards Jews. They had been stereotyped as killers of Christ and usurers. Until medieval times, Jews were barred from owning land. They survived mainly through trade and money lending. They lived in separately marked areas called ghettos. They were often persecuted through periodic organized violence and expulsion from the land. However, Hitler's hatred for Jews was based on pseudo-scientific theories of race, which held that conversion was no solution to the Jewish problem. It could be solved only through their total elimination. From 1933 to 1938, the Nazis terrorized, pauperized and segregated the Jews, compelling them to leave the country. The next phase, 1939 to 1945, aimed at concentrating them in certain areas and eventually killing them in gas chambers in Poland. So we have got some new words. The first one is gypsy. The groups that were classified as gypsy had their own community identity. Sindhi and Roma were two such communities. Many of them traced their origin to India. Pauperized, reduced to absolute poverty. Persecution, systematic organized punishment of those belonging to a group or religion. Usurers, moneylenders charging excessive interest, often used as a term of abuse. The Racial Utopia Under the shadow of war, the Nazis proceeded to realize their murderous racial ideal. Genocide and war became two sides of the same coin. Occupied Poland was divided up. Much of northwestern Poland was annexed to Germany. So Poland was divided and most of the northwestern Poland was annexed to Germany. Poles were forced to leave their homes and properties behind to be occupied by ethnic Germans brought in from occupied Europe. Poles were then herded like cattle in the other part called the general government. So the Poles were kept in the general government, the destination of all undesirables of the empire. Members of the police intelligentsia were murdered in large numbers in order to keep the entire people intellectually and spiritually servile. Polish children who looked like Aryans were forcibly snatched from their mothers and examined by race experts. If they passed the race test, they were raised in German families and if not, they were deposited in orphanages where most perished. With some of the largest ghettos and gas chambers, the general government also served. So the general government also served as the killing fields for the Jews. So here's a picture. This is one of the freight cars used to deport Jews to the death chambers. Steps to death Stage 1 Exclusion 1933-1939 to 1939. 
you have no right to live among us as citizens so we have a figure here park bench announces for aryans only the nuremberg laws of citizenship of september 1935 only persons of german or related blood would henceforth be german citizens enjoying the protection of the german empire marriages between jews and germans were forbidden extramarital relations between jews and germans became a crime jews were forbidden to fly the national flag so they were forbidden to fly the national flag other legal measures included boycott of jewish businesses expulsion from government services forced selling and confiscation of their properties besides jewish properties were vandalized and looted houses attacked synagogue burnt so what is this synagogue place of worship for people of jewish faith so their place of worships were burnt and men arrested in a pogrom in november 1938 remembered as the night of broken glass figure 15 the sign declares that this north sea bathing resort is free of jews figure 17 this is all i have to sell men and women were left with nothing to survive in the ghettos stage 2 ghettoization 1940 to 1944 you have no right to live among us from september 1941 all jews had to wear a yellow star of david on their breast so from september 1941 all jews they had to wear a yellow star of david on their breast this identity mark was stamped on their passport all legal documents and houses they were kept in jewish houses in germany and in ghettos like lots and warsaw in the east these became sites of extreme misery and poverty jews had to surrender all their wealth before they entered a ghetto soon the ghettos were brimming with hunger starvation and disease due to deprivation and poor hygiene stage 3 annihilation 1941 onwards so they are going to be annihilated you have no right to live figure 18 guilt while trying to escape the concentration camps were enclosed with live wires figure 19 piles of clothes outside the gas chamber Jews from Jewish houses, concentration camps and ghettos from different parts of Europe were brought to death factories by goods trains in Poland and elsewhere in the east most notably Balzac Auschwitz Sobibor Treblinka Jelno and Mustanek they were jarred 
in gas in gas chambers. Mass killings took place within minutes with scientific precision. Figure twenty, a concentration camp. Figure twenty one, a concentration camp. A camera can make a death camp look beautiful. Okay. Mm. Figure twenty two. Shoes taken away from prisoners before the final solution. Four, youth in Nazi Germany. F we have a figure, figure twenty three, classroom scene depicting a lesson on racial anti-Semitism. The Jewish nose is bent. At its point, it looks like the number six. So this is what the caption reads. And we have another figure, figure twenty-four: Jewish teacher and Jewish pupils expelled from school under the jeers of classmates. Hitler was fanatically interested in the youth of the country. He felt that a strong Nazi society could be established only by teaching children Nazi ideology. This required a control over the child, both inside and outside school. So he felt that a strong Nazi society could be established only by teaching children Nazi ideology. So the children will be taught about Nazi ideology. This required a control over the child both inside and outside school. What happened in schools under Nazism? All schools were cleansed and purified. This meant that teachers who were Jews or seen as politically unreliable were dismissed. So, the school were cleansed or purified. So, what does it mean? It means that the teachers who were Jews or seen as politically unreliable, they were dismissed. Children were first segregated. Germans and Jews could not sit together or play together. Subsequently, undesirable children, that is the Jews, the physically handicapped gypsies, were thrown out of school. And finally, in the 1940s, they were taken to the gas chambers. Good German children were subjected to a process of Nazi schooling. A prolonged period of ideological training. School textbooks were rewritten. Racial science was introduced to justify Nazi ideas of race. So they introduced racial science. Stereotypes about Jews were popularized even through maths classes. Children were taught to be loyal. And submissive, hate Jews and worship Hitler. Even the function of sports was to nurture a spirit of violence and aggression among children. Hitler believed that boxing could make children iron-hearted, strong, and masculine. Youth organizations were made responsible for educating German youth. In the spirit of national socialism, ten-year-olds had to enter Jungvolk. At fourteen, all boys had to join the Nazi youth organization, Hitler Youth, where they learned to worship war, glorify aggression and violence, condemn democracy, and hate Jews. Communist, gypsies, and all those categorized as undesirable.
After a period of rigorous ideological and physical training, they joined the labor service, usually at the age of 18. Then they had to serve in the armed forces and enter one of the Nazi organizations. The Nazi League Okay, the Young, the Youth League. The Youth League of the Nazis was founded in 1922. So, the Youth League of the Nazis was founded in 1922. Four years later, it was renamed Hitler Youth. To unify the youth movement under Nazi control, all other youth organizations were systematically dissolved and finally banned. So they were banned. Then what is Jungvolk? They are Nazi youth groups for children below 14 years of age. Age. So we have a source. All boys between the ages of 6 and 10 went through a preliminary training in Nazi ideology. At the end of the training, they had to take the following oath of loyalty to Hitler. In the presence of this blood banner, which represents our Führer, I swear to devote all my energies and my strength to the savior of our country, Adolf Hitler. I am willing and ready to give up my life for him. So help me God. Okay, this was the oath. Source D. Robert Ley, head of the German labor front said we start when the child is three years old as soon as he even starts to think he is given a little flag to wave then comes school the hitler youth military service but when all this is over we don't let go of anyone the labor front takes hold of them and helps and keeps hold until they go to the grave whether they like it or not so the front the labor front uh, it takes hold of them and keeps hold until they go to the grave that is till they die whether they like it or not so there's no freedom they were forced by the way Figure 27. Jewish children arriving at a death factory to be gassed. Then we have figure 25. Desirable children that Hitler wanted to see multiplied. Figure 26. A German blooded infant with his mother being brought from occupied Europe to annexed pollen for settlement. 4.1. The Nazi Cult of Motherhood Children in Nazi Germany were repeatedly told that women were radically different from men. So children in Nazi Germany were repeatedly told Children in Nazi Germany were repeatedly told that women were radically different from men. The fight for equal rights for men and women that had become part of democratic struggles everywhere was wrong and it would destroy society. While boys were taught to be aggressive, masculine and still-hearted, Girls were told that they had to become good mothers and rear pure-blooded Aryan children. Girls had to maintain the purity of the race and distance themselves from Jews. Look after the home and teach 
their children Nazi values. They had to be the bearers of the Aryan culture and race. In 1933, Hitler said, In my state, the mother is the most important citizen. But in Nazi Germany, all mothers were not treated equally. Women who bore racially undesirable children were punished, and those who produced racially desirable children were awarded. They were given favored treatment in hospitals and were also entitled to concessions in shops and on theater tickets and railway fairs to encourage women to produce many children honor crosses were awarded a bronze cross was given for four children silver for six and gold for eight or more all aryan women who deviated from the prescribed code of conduct were publicly condemned and severely punished those who maintained contact with jews poles and russians were paraded through the town with shaved heads blackened faces and placards hanging around their necks announcing i have sold the honor of the nation many received jail sentences and lost civic honor as well as their husbands and families for this criminal offense 4.2 the art of propaganda the nazi regime used language and media with care and often to great effect the terms they coined to describe their various practices are not only deceptive they are chilling nazis never used the words kill or murder in their official communications mass killings were termed so they use other words for mass killings they were termed special treatment sold so final solution for the jews so they use mass killing in other terms like special treatment and for the jews they use final solution euthanasia for the disabled selection and disinfections evacuation meant so what does this evacuation mean evacuation meant deporting people to gas chambers do you know what the gas chambers were called they were leveled disinfection areas and looked like bathrooms equipped with fake shower heads media was carefully used to win support for the regime and popularize its world view nazi ideas were spread through visual images films radio posters catchy slogans and leaflets in posters in posters groups identified as the enemies of germans were stereotyped mocked abused and described as evil socialists and liberals were represented as weak and degenerate they were attacked as malicious foreign agents propaganda films were made to create hatred to create hatred for jews the most infamous film was the eternal jew orthodox jews were stereotyped and marked source e in an address to women at the nuremberg party rally 8th september 1934 hitler said we do not consider it correct for the women to interfere in the world of the man in his man's pair we consider it natural 
that these two worlds remain distinct. What the men gives in courage on the battlefield, the women gives in eternal self-sacrifice, in eternal pain and suffering. Every child that women bring to the world is a battle, a battle wedged for the existence of her people. They were shown with flowing beards, wearing kaftans, whereas in reality it was difficult to distinguish German Jews by their outward appearance because they were a highly assimilated community. So how did they represent the Jews? They were shown with flowing beards, wearing kaftans, whereas in reality it was difficult to distinguish German Jews by their outward appearance because they were a highly assimilated community. So we have another source, F. Hitler at the Nuremberg Party Rally, 8th September 1934, also said, The women is the most stable element in the preservation of a folk. She has the most unerring sense of everything that is important to not let a race disappear, because it is her children who could be affected by all this suffering in the first place. That is why we have integrated the women in the struggle of the racial community, just as nature and providence have determined so. They were referred to as vermin, rats, and pets. So, the Jews, they were referred to as vermin, rats, and pets. So, the Jews were referred to as vermin, rats, and pests. Their movements were compared to those of rodents. Nazism worked on the minds of the people, tapped their emotions, and turned their hatred and anger at those marked as undesirable. The Nazis made equal efforts to appeal to all the different sections of the population. They sought to win their support by suggesting that Nazis alone could solve all these problems. Here's a figure, figure 28, a Nazi poster attacking Jews. Caption above reads, money is the god of Jews. In order to earn money, he commits the greatest crimes. He does not rest until he can sit on a big sack of money, until he has become the king of money. German farmer, you belong to Hitler. Why? The German farmer stands in between two great dangers today. The one danger, American economic system, big capitalism. The other is the Marxist economic system of Bolshevism. Big capitalism and Bolshevism work hand in hand. They are born of Jewish thoughts and serve the master plan of world Jewry. Who alone can rescue the farmer from these dangers? National Socialism. So it's a Nazi leaflet, 1932. Figure 29. The leaflet shows how the Nazis appealed to the peasants. And we have another figure, figure 30, a Nazi party poster of the 1920s. It asked workers to vote for Hitler, the frontline soldier. Some important dates. August 1, 1914, First World War begins. November 9, 1918, Germany capitulates 
ending the war. November 9, 1918, proclamation of the Weimar Republic. June 28, 1919, Treaty of Versailles. January 30, 1933, Hitler becomes Chancellor of Germany. September 1, 1939, Germany invades Poland, beginning of the Second World War. June 22, 1941, Germany invades the USSR. So this is the big blunder which we read about. June 23, 1941, mass murder of the Jews begins. December 8, 1941, the United States joins Second World War. Why? Because of Japan of what happened in the Pearl Harbor. January 27, 1945, Soviet troops liberate Auschwitz. May 8, 1945, Allied victory in Europe. Then we have ordinary people and the crimes against humanity. How did the common people react? Nazism. Many saw the world through Nazi eyes and spoke their mind in Nazi language. They felt hatred and anger surge inside them when they saw someone who looked like a Jew. So what happened was that the people, they felt hatred and anger surge inside them when they saw someone who looked like a Jew. They marked the houses of Jews and reported suspicious neighbors. They genuinely believed Nazism would bring prosperity and improve general well-being. But not every German was a Nazi. Okay. But not every German was a Nazi. Many organized active resistance to Nazism, braving police repression and death. The large majority of Germans, however, were passive onlookers and apathetic witnesses. They were too scared to act, to differ, to protest. They preferred to look away. Pastor Nemoller, a resistance fighter, observed an absence of protest and uncanny license amongst ordinary Germans in the face of brutal and organized crimes committed against people in the Nazi empire. He wrote movingly about this silence. First, they came for the communist. Well, I was not a communist, so I said nothing. Then they came for the social democrats. Well, I was not a social democrat, so I did nothing. Then they came for the trade unionist. But I was not a trade unionist. And then they came for the Jews. But I was not a Jew, so I did little. Then when they came for me, there was no one left who could stand up for me. Okay, it's a powerful message. Box 1. Was the lack of concern for Nazi victims only because of the terror? No, says Lawrence Rees, who interviewed people from diverse backgrounds for his recent documentary. The Nazis, a warning from history. Erna Kranz, an ordinary German teenager in the 1930s and a grandmother now, said to Rees, 1930s offered a glimmer of hope, not just for the unemployed but for everybody, for we all felt downtrodden. From my own experience, I could say salaries increased and Germany seemed to have regained its sense of purpose. I could only say for myself, I thought it was a good time. I liked it. Okay, some of the Germans, they liked it. 
What Jews felt in Nazi Germany is a different story altogether. Charlotte Barrett secretly recorded people's dreams in her diary and later published them in a highly disconcerting book called The Third Ridge of Dreams. She describes how Jews themselves began believing in the Nazi stereotypes about them. They dreamt of their hooked noses, black hair and eyes, Jewish looks and body movements. The stereotypical images publicized in the Nazi press haunted the Jews. They troubled them even in their dreams. Jews died many deaths even before they reached the gas chamber. Figure 31. So here's a figure. Inhabitants of the Warsaw ghetto collected documents and placed them in three milk cans along with other containers as destruction seemed imminent. These containers were buried in the cellars of buildings in 1943. This can was discovered in 1950. 5.1 Knowledge about the Holocaust Information about Nazi practices had trickled out of Germany during the last years of the regime, but it was only after the war ended and Germany was defeated. Uh, but it was only after the war ended and Germany was defeated that the world came to realize the horrors of what had happened. While the Germans were preoccupied with their own plight, as a defeated nation emerging out of the rubble, the Jews wanted the world to remember the atrocities and sufferings they had endured during the Nazi killing operations, also called the Holocaust. At its height, a ghetto inhabitant had said to another that he wanted to outlive the war just for half an hour. Presumably, he meant that he wanted to be able to tell the world about what had happened in Nazi Germany. This indomitable spirit to bear witness and to preserve the documents can be seen in many ghetto and camp inhabitants who wrote diaries, kept notebooks and created archives. On the other hand, when the war seemed lost, the Nazi leadership distributed petrol on its functionaries to destroy all incriminating evidence available in offices. Yet the history and the memory of the Holocaust live on in memoirs, fiction, documentaries, poetry, memorials and museums in many parts of the world today. These are a tribute to those who resisted it and embarrassing reminder to those who collaborated and a warning to those who watched in silence. Mm, it's true for those who watched in silence. Figure 32 Denmark secretly rescued their Jews from Germany. This is one of the boats used for the purpose. Box 2. Mahatma Gandhi writes to Hitler. Letter to Adolf Hitler. Asset Vardha, C.P. India, July 23, 1939. Her Hitler. Berlin, Germany. Dear friend, friends have been urging me to write to you for the sake of humanity, but I have resisted their request because of the feeling that any letter from me would be an impertinence. Something tells me that I must not calculate 
and that I must make my appeal for whatever it may be worth. It is quite clear that you are today the one person in the world who can prevent a war which may reduce humanity to the savage state. Must you pay that price for an object, however worthy it may appear to you to be? Will you listen to the appeal of one who has deliberately shunned the method of war, not without considerable success? Anyway, I anticipate your forgiveness if I have erred in writing to you. I remain your sincere friend, M. K. Gandhi. The Collected Works of Mahatma Gandhi, Volume 76 Letter to Adolf Hitler, Varda, December 24, 1940 We have found in non-violence a force which, if organized, can without doubt match itself against a combination of all the most violent forces in the world. In non-violent technique, as I have said, there is no such thing as defeat. It is all do or die, without killing or hurting. Okay, it is all do or die, without killing or hurting. It can be used practically without money and obviously without the aid of signs of destruction which you have brought to such perfection. It is a marvel to me that you do not see that it is nobody's monopoly. If not the British, some other power will certainly improve upon your method and beat you with your own weapon. You are leaving no legacy to your people of which they would feel proud. They cannot take pride in a recital of cruel deed, however skillfully planned. I therefore appeal to you in the name of humanity to stop the war. I am your sincere friend, M. K. Gandhi. The Collected Works of Mahatma Gandhi, Volume 79. So that's all guys. See you in my next. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.